Okay, so this is a video to answer a question I've been asked quite a lot of times before. And um, I've answered it, I think, in several videos, but I've never done it as its own thing. So I thought I'd do that, and then that way people can find the answer more easily. And I've been asked, how do you know if a filter's going to expire? So, you know, you don't get gassed wearing a filter. Um, there's a couple of methods, but I should point out, there's nothing, unless you have a really good filter, there's nothing that's too solid and concrete. So if I get the caps off of this... There's not anything you can actually visually see from this filter, but I should be able to explain it, you know, using it as a visual aid. So, in a filter you have two layers normally, or at least in a CBRN filter, an ABEC P3 filter, you'd have two layers. <coughs> you have first your particulate filter in the front section, then you have your activated charcoal in the rear section, and then normally, you can see it from the top, there's another small particulate layer at the top just to keep the charcoal in. So you have a particulate layer, your activated carbon, then another particulate layer. So, if the uh, filter is going to expire because basically you've been expo exposed to too much particulates, sort of dust and stuff like that, the particulate filter jams. Now this is the best of the two scenarios because nothing gets through the mask. It becomes harder and harder to breathe. You have to, you know, breathe harder to pull air in because the filter's clogging up at the front. If you're exposed to a large amount of tear gas in a short time with a filter on, that will happen. So once the you know, filter starts getting clogged, you find it harder to breathe, you know it's time to switch the filter because you know otherwise if you leave it on too much longer you're going to suffocate because nothing's going to get through the filter. Um, however, for the activated charcoal layer there's not anything as scientific as that. Basically what happens is when it's the activated charcoal, activated charcoal adsorbs stuff, so basically stuff sticks to the activated charcoal rather than going through the filter. Um, once the activated charcoal has absorbed too much, there's not going to be any, um, you know, anything left in it to keep stuff from going through. So all of a sudden you'll start finding that you get a very faint sense of smell, and then over time that will go into, you know, a full sense of smell and the filters become useless. So, in that scenario, as soon as you begin to smell anything that's not, you know, the inside and the mask sort of smell, um, you need to change the filter straight away because if there's a particularly deadly bit of vapour coming in that's going to actually get through the filter at this stage. So uh, if I think you're exposed to something like VX you're probably already dead by the point that you know something's coming through the filter but if you were, um, you know, had chlorine or one of the less deadly chemical agents and you, as soon as you begin to smell something you know that it's time to change that filter. Now there are some filters that are better in regards to a lot of modern filters I've seen, but I've never bought them because they cost a lot of money, apparently have some sort of coloured thing on it, like I guess a sticker or a label, and that's designed to, um, you know, like change colour or something when the filter's going to run out, so they can give you a pretty accurate estimate, you know, how long's left on the filter by the colour of the label. So I guess um, there's maybe a bit of activated carbon in that sticker or something, and then once that's exposed to the air along with the filter internals it should roughly you know, change at the same time. I'm not entirely sure how they work because I don't have one but it's obviously an idea to make it a bit safer than just going by can I smell something. The other cool filters, and I'll definitely pick one of these up if I can find one, um, there are some filters I've seen that have clear plastic around the outside so you can see the particulate layer and the um, actual charcoal inside it. So if you saw those, you might be able to actually visually see something going on, although you can't really look if the filter's like there or, you know, down there, what's going on with your filter. But if you're with somebody else, they could probably look over and see what's going on with your filter. So there's nothing really any more scientific to that, as far as I'm aware. You know, some, and it depends entirely what you're exposed to in terms of chemical agents and whatever. Some filters can last, you know, absolutely hours and hours and hours when exposed to low concentrations of weak things, whereas... You know, some filters within a few hours of being brand new and being opened could become completely saturated because of stuff going into them. So, obviously, as I said, particulate and the vapour layer expire separately. In theory, even if you have an old filter and the vapour layer has completely worn out, the, you know, charcoal's just absorbed everything, it's completely saturated, you can still use the filter of the particulate layer. So, if you have a P3 filter like one of these, is this a P3? Yeah, this is a P3, it says there. So, if this filter it completely expires, I could still attach this to a mask. It's bulkier than having just a P3 filter alone, but the P3 filter would function absolutely fine, and that means that I could use this for dealing with dusty environments and things like that, no worry. So, even expired filters can be useful against the right things, but obviously be careful what you are using them for.